Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. I'll not let you go unless you bless me. And he said, What is your name? He said, Jacob, he said, thou shalt no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, you have had power with God and you have prevailed. He touched the hollow of his thigh and he blessed him. And the Bible says, the sun arose and he called the place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. The meaning of that is that when you are careless with encounters, it can cost you many years of pain for someone this may be your, the moment your mother has fasted for prayed for that Lord bring my family to a moment where they are liberated for real bring my child to a moment where he will encounter an anointing you don't have the luxury of waiting one more year in pain and regret until the hand of time rolls back for someone, this is the moment where the, the anointing that follows your ordination has been looking for you. Don't be careless. Pay rapt attention. There were certain people called the sons of the prophet. The next prophet after Elijah should have come from one of them. But they were careless with encounters. And Elijah said, even though I was not part of the prophetic school, I will follow diligently. Are we together now? It takes diligence. It takes hunger. Acts chapter 3. He said, look on us. And the Bible says the man looked at them steadfastly, expecting to receive. You can expect to receive. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are gathered tonight not unto a man. We are gathered to experience the God who can end circles. The God who can change stories. The God who can rewrite destinies. We have come to stand in faith with the verdict of heaven over our lives, our businesses, over Taraba State. We have come to say amen to a few things and say never again to others. Lord, we pray tonight that you will be glorified. Let this meeting be a destiny-defining encounter. For in Jesus' name we pray. I did that in the morning and let me do that because this may be your last chance for tonight. Walk up to two or three people and prophesy to them. Tell them never again. Oh, never again. You cried once, you will not cry again. You will experience shame from January. Someone be generous with releasing that prophetic word. Never again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please be gloriously seated. Please be gloriously seated. Be gloriously seated. Hallelujah. Now, I have a confession to make before I continue. Um, I'm not going to be teaching what I initially planned to teach because um, tonight is a miracle service. I want to pray for the sick and I want to minister. To the needs of god's people so it will not allow the time um my initial plan was to teach you on the mystery of altars but we'll leave that for another time it's a very important teaching most believers do not understand the mystery of altars these are systems of authorization in the spirit but again we'll leave that for another time um because someone's someone's prayer has gotten to heaven and there has to be an answer tonight if that is not you allow your neighbor receive i said someone's prayer someone's desperation has gotten to the heavens and in the name of jesus your answer must enter your hands tonight in the name of jesus so we'll shelve that for another time god granting us grace but i've done a teaching on the mystery of altars is actually a teaching series let them have dominion part two if you go online let them have dominion part two i dealt with the mystery of altars you want to take the time 
to just go through it and learn for your knowledge so yesterday quick recap our assignment yesterday night was to probe the integrity of God's word the intent behind yesterday's teaching was to vet and conclude whether or not God is reliable whether or not his word can be trusted and we established a few things yesterday just a quick recap number one that God is not a man that you should lie still remember and that God is not the son of man that you should repent that if he has spoken it is within his power to make what he says come to pass number two he says my covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that is gone forth from out of my mouth we consider Genesis 21 from verse 1 that the Lord visited Sarah as he had said the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken and if you recall I did tell us that the Word of God represent the boundary for the administration of God's power that God can do all things but he does not do all things his economy works by doing only what he says so the power of God only moves the direction of his word that the way to get God's power to the scene is to get his word to the scene remember that and we began to look at a few things that God has integrity and I told you that integrity means to be consistent in character unbending in your values predictable in terms of honesty and truthfulness that God is not only powerful he has integrity when he speaks he is consistent in character to bring what he says to pass we examine Genesis chapter 1 the first time we see God manifesting as a speaking spirit and the Bible says God said let there be light the response was and there was light that means any other thing he says should be must be are we together this morning for those of you who were not around again a very powerful time um, I took the part one of what I'm about to discuss now enforcing God's will and we discussed a few very important things I would also want to do a quick recap on them I taught you how to enforce divine verdicts that as much as it is that God is a God of integrity there is a way that the speakings of God are established and manifested in the life of the saints we examined Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10 your kingdom come your will be done in earth as it is in heaven then first Corinthians chapter 3 if you recall and verse 9 profound scripture it says we are co-laborers or laborers together with Christ I did tell us that everything that happens upon the earth is not just dependent on God and his word it's also dependent on the cooperation listen carefully and the participation of men when Satan wants to met out evil and destruction upon the earth the plan is fabricated in the realm of the spirit but the execution is with respect to willing men the purposes and the program of God are we together now established in the heavens in the mind of God but the execution of the same depends on the presence the availability and the yieldedness of willing men so the Bible says the heaven of the heavens belong to the Lord but the earth hath he given to the children of men that means as mighty as God is full of integrity full of power full of grace he can establish a verdict concerning your life are we together but whether or not that verdict will find expression in your life in experience does not just depend on his integrity it also depends on your knowing how to come into partnership with God are we following now and I taught us in the morning that essentially according to scripture there are two ways to come into partnership with divine verdicts for their manifestations upon the earth number one is the partnership of prayer the partnership of prayer that when you go to the place of prayer that is the biblical way to say amen that you don't say amen just by verbalizing amen you say amen by submitting to the ministry of prayer and I told you that prayer is essentially predicated upon the fact that God gave man a will 
and he will not usurp on your will are we together now yes i did define for us in the morning i don't want to bore you again with that definition that not every one of god's creature can be called man there is an exact requirement you must fulfill to be called man one of it is that you must be a spirit if you are not a spirit you cannot be called man number two that spirit must be domiciled in a body number three that spirit must have solical faculties that give you an advantage of expression both from the realm of the spirit and the physical realm there are animals who are god's creatures they are not called man angels cannot be called man there is an exact species of god's creation that he called man so when the bible says the earth hath he given to the sons of men not everybody has earned that status man and then the bible says in luke 18 and verse 1 still speaking about men he spake a parable that that man that god created giving him dominion that they ought always to pray and not to faint so in the place of prayer you come into divine partnership the place of prayer is the place where the saints say amen the place of prayer is the place where the saints say never again it is not something you carelessly verbalize you commit to prayer it was the apostolic model that was left with the church in acts chapter 2 and verse 42 the bible says and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine in the breaking of bread in fellowship and in prayer acts chapter 6 and verse 4 but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word first thessalonians 5 17 it says pray without ceasing mark 11 24 what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that thou receivest them and thou shalt have them james 5 13 is any man afflicted the bible says let him pray so when the saints do not pray they authorize darkness not praying is like leaving your land without sowing anything something will still grow because satan is also a farmer are we together when he meets any virgin land he does not leave it the way he met it one of the ways satan steals is not to take alone one of the ways he steals is also to introduce things he's not always taking satan is a giver too it's only that he gives what is not needed he can give trouble are we together now the bible says if you being evil know how to give good gifts that means there are bad gifts and somebody has to be the one giving them when you get up with a growth you did not go to bed with that is something that was given but it's not a good gift because it does not bring glory to the lord let me speak to someone already every tree that my father has not planted anything roaming around your body roaming around your destiny tonight in the name of the lord jesus the son of the living god you will not walk out with that same thing in your body please be seated so the first way we enforce the speakings of god the will of god the verdict of heaven in our lives extending to our businesses our families and our territory is by submitting to the ministry of prayer i told you your prayer has to be fervent heartfelt your prayer has to be word compliant to produce power shouting arbitrarily carelessly amiss without the content of scripture is wasting your time in prayer in fact what makes prayer prayer is beyond the energy that is dissipated in the place of prayer the, the word compliancy of your prayer is what gives it power. And so tonight, very quickly as a charge, so that I'll have enough time to minister to the needs of God's people, we'll look at part two of enforcing God's will and we'll be looking at the power of obedience. The power of obedience. These are the two spiritual systems for enforcing any divine verdict when god speaks it does not guarantee that it will come to pass the manifestation of everything god has said depends on the cooperation of the saints in prayer and in obedience if you're with me say amen. amen you would notice maybe just to help the ushers you would notice that offering baskets have been passed i believe that should be for your prayer requests 
And so for those of you who are here to write your prayer request, do take some time without distraction to pen down your expectations. And um, for those who already have, you can do well to pass to the ushers. And ushers, once you do that, just calm down so that the people don't get distracted and uh, we'll give you room again to go ahead. So for those who have written your requests, please make sure you write it. Write everything you are tired of that must give way in your life because in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, fire will fall upon this place tonight. And everything that does not name the name of Christ that is not planted by my God will give way. For someone, the veil that has covered your ministry and stopped your relevance in this land is about to be torn down finally. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The power of obedience. Two scriptures very quickly. Job chapter 36 and verse 11. Job 36 and verse 11. Job 36 and verse 11. Let me have your attention for one moment. I want us to read it together. If you see it projected, let's read in concert. Ready? One to read. If they obey, uh huh. The first word, please, as loud as you can. Just the first word you see. Ready? One more time. If. One more time now you see such a strong condition if it is not just subject to the potency of my word nor my power if they obey me they have a choice they can choose as an act of their will as an act of their volition that in spite of the fact that i have planned great things prosperity and pleasure he says if they obey me and they serve me he leaves you with an assurance that they shall spend their days there is a package for your days and there is a package for your years and all of them are connected to obedience scripture number two isaiah chapter one and verse 19 isaiah chapter one and verse 19 read it as if it will be your testimony after tonight ready one to go if ye be willing and obedient ye shall eat the good of the land one more time there is good in every land there is good in every legitimate business there is good in every family there is good in every destiny but whether or not your portion of good will come to you depends on your willingness and your obedience your willingness and your obedience be patient as i read deuteronomy chapter 28 let me begin from verse 1 media let's walk together deuteronomy 28 i'll begin my reading from verse 1 patiently follow as we establish the power of obedience verse 1 it says it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently you see conditions now unto the voice of the lord thy god to observe and to do all his commandments which i commanded this day the result that the lord thy god will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth verse 2 and all these blessings how many blessings all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee condition if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the lord thy god what are the blessings number one verse three blessed shall thou be in the city blessed shall thou be in taraba blessed shall thou be in jalingo it says blessed shall thou be in the field next verse verse four now blessed shall be the fruit of your body that means you will not give birth to an arm robber you will not give birth to a prostitute the fruit of your body and the fruit of your ground your ground is anywhere you sow your business your work your career it says the fruit of your cattle the increase of thy kind the flocks of thy sheep verse 5 blessed shall be your basket and your store verse 6 blessed shall thou be when thou come in and blessed shall thou be when thou go out keep this scripture for one minute 
there are people who are only blessed when they come in they are not blessed when they go out you have to come into certain cities and certain regions to be blessed and once they are not in there they cannot be blessed but the bible says on account of obedience a grace can be activated upon your life that whether you come in or go out the result is the same whether you are in america whether you are in jalingo whether you are in joss whether you are in in in, in uh, yola you are in my that you program your reality not based on region it's a covenant a grace that follows you blessed shall thou be when thou comest in and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out let's finish up seven the lord on account of your obedience shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before your face they shall come against thee one way and flee seven ways the lord shall command the blessing upon your storehouse and on all that thou settest thy hands unto he shall bless thee in the land which the lord god giveth thee we're almost there verse 9 the lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself as he has sworn to thee if thou shalt keep the commandments of the lord and walk in his ways verse 10 as a result of your obedience all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the lord and they shall be afraid of thee verse 11 the lord shall make you plenteous in goods who makes men plenteous in goods you look for it you will never find it it is the lord that makes men plenteous in goods in the fruit of your body the fruit of your cattle the fruit of your crown in the land which the lord swear unto your fathers to give you the final verse verse 12 verse 12 the lord shall open to you his good treasure the heavens to give thee rain unto thy land in his season and to bless all the work of your hands it says thou shalt lend to many and thou shalt not borrow shout a loud amen. amen so in addition to the ministry of prayer which has to do with exercising your will now please look up please look up please look up every verdict of heaven every promise of god made to the saints listen carefully has conditions attached for its manifestation every single promise to the saints from god for your well-being for your excelling has conditions attached to it why does god attach conditions to promises to give you an opportunity to choose whether to obey or disobey if conditions were not attached to promises god would not be just because you cannot obey until there is an opportunity to disobey the mere fact that you have an option to disobey is what gives obedience value are we together every blessing from god every prophetic word every divine verdict every will and intent of god for the saints requires the saints to participate to partner with god through obedience what does it mean to obey god to obey god means to walk in keeping with the conditions that make for the manifestation of his speakings to obey God means to walk in keeping to walk in keeping with the conditions that make for or allow for the manifestation of his speakings the manifestation of his will the manifestation of prophetic words in our lives when you walk in keeping with the conditions connected to every prophetic word connected to every blessing it is said that you are walking in obedience and let me tell you the truth you may have heard me say it but let me say it again for reminder not everything in the kingdom is a gift 
not everything in the kingdom is a gift there are rewards the bible tells us god rewards a reward is not a gift a reward honors obedience or efforts are we together this is very important so when god speaks ladies and gentlemen whenever you hear what god says either as a rima word to your spirit or the written word scripture that you have found your search has not been complete until you find the role you have to play in making that word come to pass there is always a participatory role from the saints that commit god's word are we together whether it is your healing whether it is deliverance whether it is prosperity whether it is increased advancement longevity you name it every aspect of the kingdom life demands obedience from the saints if you will see god's word manifest in your life as simple as this statement is it is the reason why many believers keep claiming things or wishing things and they never see the manifestation of god's promises over their lives i told us yesterday that when jesus was walking on water and the disciples saw him peter said if it be thou bid me come he did not say peter come he simply said come but the person who obeyed not the person who heard the person who obeyed that was the person who received the result in fact the bible tells us in hebrews chapter 4 it says there remained a rest for the people of god in as much as they are the people of god there is still a rest they are still wanting for a rest he said they heard the word just like we did but the word did not profit them not be mixed with faith in them that heard it and so he leaves us with an instruction he says let us labor to enter the rest labor in prayer labor in obedience to enter the rest rest in ministry rest in finances rest in destiny are we together written in scripture is a roadmap to an excelling life in scripture in 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 ministry written here in scripture is a roadmap to an excelling life as a businessman an excelling life for your finances for your health everything that makes for life and godliness is captured in scripture your assignment is to number one understand that divine verdict that this is God's will for you whether or not you walk in it is a different thing if you die of sickness today it does not change the fact that God wants you healed the Bible says let God be true Taraba speak to me let God be true and all men whether the men are preachers whether the men are apostles prophets whether the men are businessmen whether the men are parents let God be true and every man including every condition be a lie your assignment is to use the written word and engage it in prayer engage it through obedience are we together to change everything in your life and to keep overturning until your reality becomes consistent with that which is said so i give you an instance you find yourself struggling financially you are poor you are broke ends are not meeting and you are a righteous person you love the lord rather than giving flimsy excuses and cooking up all kinds of theologies go back to god and take responsibility there is provision for the economy of the saints whether it is working or not in your life is a different thing and if it is not working you take responsibility what is the will of god concerning my economic well-being are we together now when you find it you engage in the place of prayer and then you find out the conditions connected let me give you a few conditions just as an example one the bible says a diligent hand shall be made fat the bible says he who does not sow by reason of the weather will be
beg in harvest so diligence is one of the ways you partner with the grace to prosper are we together now there is the force of favor there is the force of relationships there's the force of value see thou a man diligent in his business he shall not stand before mean men if you neglect all these things you can claim prosperity all you want the door will never open because god is not a man that he should lie and if you claim part of the laws and obey part you will be learning that the power of obedience is when it is complete not when you start obeying what gives power to obedience is you finish the process of obedience having the readiness to judge all disobedience when your obedience is complete imagine that we were flying in from abuja to taraba and just three minutes to landing we turn the plane how many of you know that in the air we're already within the airspace of taraba but i cannot say i'm in taraba yet I'm still in the air your airspace but i'm still hanging in the air if for any reason the pilot turns back and takes me to abuja if i call you and i say i came to taraba will you believe me that's how many christians are they roam around the corridors of obedience but it never gets complete and then they keep wondering why it does not work are we together how about your health what is the secret to health and wellness man shall not live by bread alone but by every word so if the only thing you are eating is bread alone you will most likely die in an untimely way because longevity is a product of bread and scripture bread and scripture every time you wake up in the morning as you are eating the bread in your kitchen remember there are two kinds of bread that keep you sustained bread and every proceeding word you are malnourished when you eat only once a month so if you are eating bread physical bread every day and the bread of the spirit is once a month when you are broken in the spirit it will tell on your body that's why the machines cannot detect what is wrong but you know you are sick because a broken spirit can dry up the bones sickness can start from the realm of the spirit and actually affect your physical body and the machines are not trained to detect spirit activities so they will look for something and say you are you are not all right but the name of what is wrong with you may not be known we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you and we will never settle for less when we know there's more that's found in you what is the key to healing no matter the kind of power that is available for healing the administration of god's healing power depends on the hearing of faith and the action of obedience that's how healing happens if you do not hear the word of faith and act in obedience you will not be healed that's how it works how about longevity apostle i want to live long i know god wants to keep me long you may die surprisingly if you do not know the key to longevity there is an exact spiritual technology that captures longevity number one honor your father and your mother in the lord that your days may be long you walk in disobedience insulting everybody you keep subtracting your days without knowing here is a word to a very arrogant young generation you insult every elderly person whether in ministry or in life no matter what you think you have life will keep quiet but you do not know you are depleting your days at the prime of your destiny you will fall down and collapse with no explanation because scripture cannot be broken i'm not scaring you is the truth number two the bible says i said before you life and death i said before you blessing and cursing choose life with all due respect if you smoke 10 packs 20 packs you have chosen death to choose life does not mean to verbalize your choice to make pro-life decisions like your health your well-being you don't damage your organs through carelessness choose life are we learning now number three i shall not die but live and declare 
if you are not actively serving the purposes of god there is no justification for longevity you don't need long life if your longevity is not an advantage to god's program why do you want to live long are we together look at me some of you here run great companies and corporations if you want to downsize your workers usually the principal yardstick will be inefficiency am i right on that if you are reducing workers from 50 to 10 the ultimate basis would be those who are inefficient so don't you just claim long life when your life is you are not serving in the house of god when you hear that something that is pro kingdom is happening it's not your interest you are signing up for untimely death so it's not about saying i will not die there are conditions attached who is learning are we together when you give birth to a stubborn and a nasty child sometimes it may not be but most times is the carelessness of the parents because the bible said train up a child it didn't say train up an adult when you wait for the child to become an adult and you start struggling to bend the person train up a child god knows why he described the, the state of the child's life don't wait for a child to become an adult they run their lives until they become a nuisance to society it is difficult to train adults train up a child the way to train up a child is not to give instructions is to provide mentorship mentorship means you lead while they copy if as a father you've never prayed before your child and you tell your child you must be a prayer warrior you are not training the child transformation is difficult without a reference there has to be a reference is someone learning now i'm showing you why many believers keep claiming things that never happen they do not know that there are conditions connected to every manifestation of god's verdict god's verdict for instance the bible says no inhabitant in zion shall say i am sick you will be surprised how many believers are still struggling with diseases and that's not an insult is to tell you that satan is a stubborn spirit he will act like he did not hear what god said hence the need to enforce through obedience enforce through obedience enforce through obedience what is the secret to church growth many things but among them that if i be lifted up from the earth so as a man of god when your attention shifts from yourself to projecting jesus you have found the key to drawing men provided it is myself my ministry my attention no the one you are projecting is the one who sponsors the increase paul can plant apollo can water but increase is exclusively of god exclusively of god are we together how about accessing the anointing of the holy spirit the bible says how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power he went about doing good and healing all day that were oppressed of the devil and he said as my father has sent me so sent are you but why are you that not that anointed in spite of the fact that the bible already says it's in your destiny that every ordination carries an anointing where is the anointing that follows your call just because you see it in scripture that is the will of god for you to be anointed does not mean you'll be anointed there are keys that enforce that verdict to your life that becomes a difference between any two believers it's not the will of god not necessarily the election of grace it is that one has chosen to partner with the spirit to enforce the speakings of god whereas the other one maybe through ignorance or carelessness has refused to come into that divine partnership say i'm a co-laborer with god say that again say i am a co-laborer with god yes the formula is always the spirit and the bride say come the spirit and the bride say come the spirit and the bride say be healed god is spirit so when god says i want healing in taraba there has to be a believer who echoes that same thing the bride the spirit and the bride the spirit and the bride the spirit and mary made the word become flesh the spirit and the bride say come when the spirit is saying be healed be lifted be changed and there is no believer who is standing in partnership the word of god will continually look impotent impotent 
You're my glory, the lifter up of my head. You're my glory, the lifter up of my head. You are my glory, the lifter up of my head. You are my glory, the lifter up of my head. The lifter up of my head. The lifter up of my head. You're the lifter up of my head. The lifter up of my head. This will be your song. He's the lifter up of my head. You're the lifter up of my head. That men will look at your life after Peniel and say, What happened in two weeks? The favor the increase the anointing and you will tell them that I found out that when God speaks you do not just fold your arms and say amen that's not how to say amen you say amen by coming into divine partnership one in prayer and two through obedience you walk in keeping listen the real secret to obedience is knowing the conditions tied because you see obedience is not action alone obedience is action as demanded let me have one gentleman here anybody at all please just anybody come anybody come sir now watch this if i ask this gentleman my brother and white come i saw you already coming so you come you're a pastor God bless you, Pastor. So it's good that you are here. That means it's a new season for you in Jesus' name. Please stand here, sir, just for a moment. If I ask this man of God, I ask this gentleman, go and meet this man of God. When you meet him, reach out to his left hand. There is a biro there. Collect it. Please lift your biro, sir. Can you see that there is a biro here? That means I have integrity. Whether he can see the biro or not, I have integrity are we together so if this man never gets the biro it is not limitation on my own part i'm the one who gave this man the biro so i know but the condition connected to it is that you walk to this man reach out to his left hand let me tell you what most believers do in the name of jesus this biro must be my destiny i know it is it not god you just allow me you will see one day this biro will enter my hand 2015 2016 2017 2018 2019 and yet the spirit is still saying this is in your destiny and the man is saying god but he's having dreams of himself holding the biro and using the biro he will wake up from the dreams and record it yet it will never come to pass because he does not know how to partner with prophecy then one day he comes to peniel 2024 and he hears a man of God teaching showing him what needs to be done now you walk gallantly to my left and pick your Bible go ahead go ahead go ahead you're the lifter up of my head you're the lifter up of my head you're the lifter up of my head now watch this the day he got the Bible was not the day god wanted him to get the biro it's already in his destiny imagine the things he would have written with that biro if he had had the knowledge he kept telling himself come back again please thank you sir for using you thank you for your humility this man will keep saying how can i lie sharia forever and god will say no i don't walk like that now if you have to learn god using the life of this man he will misrepresent god because there are many things you will credit to god that is not god's concern at all he's not understanding the dynamics of enforcing god's word will make god look like a liar for someone that biro can be your church land for someone that biro can be blessings for your children for someone it can be healing and you are wondering god but are you not watching me i tell you the truth your obedience is the bridge 
between prophecy and its manifestation when God puts the program Peniel in the life and the mind of his servant God already saw these days but whether or not it will happen he had to get up and partner with God when he was planning the program you did not sign any contract that you will come but see what obedience can do that is how powerful complete obedience is are we together so stand again my friend this time around let me give this man of God my Bible to hold so you hold it watch this are we together now this man is representing you also representing your children your children's children because the promise is unto everybody now whether or not you will receive this today does not depend on God God is willing he already told you and the Word of God is a compendium of God's desire don't ask God for things he's already told you is his will no it's not a wise thing God will you heal me it's already written it's already written if I come to your house and you serve me food and I keep staring at it and salivating and getting sad I say sorry after one hour is this for me and you say yes please feel free everything yes and after two hours you still find me there you can become offended because you would think I'm poisoning you that becomes the only suspicion what are you still doing you are hungry and here's pounded yam or here's rice in front of you what stops you from eating with thanksgiving and you say I'm still watching the person who gave you although God is not like that but that you, the person becomes offended and says, okay so you are hungry and you are rejecting my food that means you think I want to kill you God is a good father for someone this is ministerial increase please hold it sir for someone this is your finances for someone this is your healing for someone this is a new level for someone this is business increase for a young man here yeah, this is an extraordinary prophetic ministry an extraordinary apostolic ministry but whether or not sometimes God has to encourage you by showing you dreams you see yourself standing on the crusade ground you wake up from that dream and just record it and leave it there it will never come to pass I told you yesterday revivals have no dates the day the vessels are ready that is the day revival happens So this gentleman has come for Peniel and he's had the word and while sharing the word the spirit of grace came on him and he said so I have delayed my destiny like this that means this backwardness this retrogression this suffering in spite of the fact that I love God I've not been able to make progress in my life so this is the cause this is your destiny let's work together this is what the Holy Ghost does he engraces you one step after the other as you are hearing the word this man is closer to his destiny closer to his destiny and suddenly you see that and as that happens to him supernaturally you begin to see an anointing and you say i used to know this brother now he has come into partnership with heaven when did this gentleman start healing the sick the day he chose to obey prophecy the day he chose to come into partnership obedience is powerful Jesus is washing the eyes of someone or placing mud and tells a blind man by yourself go to a pool called Silo when God says go it means the grace to go has been given to go to the pool called Silo and wash if I were the man I would say I'm blind and you put mud again on the eyes but the man went there and washed and he returned seeing hmm. are we together I'm saying this because this is what is about to happen to someone you are you are long there are some things that should not happen in your life again again don't be in doubt because God has given the verdict already to his servant never again should the elements of creation fight you never again 
should the sea the wind the sun the moon fight you never again no but it is obedience your father would have done it but he did not do it till he died your mother would have done it she could not do it till she died your grandfather would have done it now god has found you don't disappoint him don't disappoint him don't disappoint him god had always desired to come through for that family but they thought that when god speaks you fold your arms and just say amen folding your arms and saying amen is not how you find rest you find rest after obedience You war with the prophecy that has been given in prayer and through obedience and now this man he receives this thing and the next thing you see him carrying what he was not born with I know this guy when he was born I don't know him with this prophetic grace obedience brought it this man was born from a poor family begging he even came to our house as a child you are right but Saul can become Paul Jacob can become Israel men can change destinies can be rewritten at the instance of obedience rejoice not over me my enemies don't look at the yesterday version whereas obedience is evolving me already you are looking at the weak man of God whereas I found power with God already don't look at Jacob the cheat and the supplanter when his name has been changed to Israel men can find God obedience brings men into divine partnership and they establish through their partnerships the verdict of heaven hallelujah have you gotten this illustration in the name of Jesus man of God may the Lord bless you and increase your ministry I speak over you by the power of the Holy Spirit let it be a new season for you in the name of Jesus Christ amen God bless you now listen to me in this place tonight are people who are trusting God to establish his verdict or to change certain decrees Daniel chapter 3 29 and 30 the three Hebrew boys changed the decree of the king when the king speaks any other king who has spoken their verdicts and their decrees like sicknesses like yokes like curses whatever it may be can change the representative of the governor came out and he gave a very humbling testimony I don't know where he met the, the, the Muslim girl but you imagine that lady I'm even hearing the testimony for the first time myself that someone can come in the presence of God and in one moment one one moment one moment one moment seven people will start running now hold them please so they don't injure themselves just hold them the power of God is coming on them you're my glory the lifter up of my head you're my glory the lifter up of my head you are my glory the lifter up of my head you are my glory the lifter up of my head the Lord is speaking to someone there are at least 10 of you now help them please that you are the deliverer over your family there is an anointing you are the deliverer there is a mantle upon you you are the one who God is going to be using like a Gideon help them like a Gideon I will soon ask you to bring them out like a Deborah like a Gideon you are the one who the grace is upon you are the one who the grace is upon for the deliverance of your family i'm saying it again you are the one who the grace is upon as i'm speaking i'm depositing an anointing upon your spirit man holy holy blessed is he who comes 
in the name of our God. Holy, holy, the Sadducee who comes in the name of our God. Holy, holy, the Sadducee who comes in the name of our God. We hail you. We worship you. We hail you, Most High. We hail you. We worship you. We hail you. Alamane kusa la kusa branda balika beretuskiya. Kelende barato savras kelemenan tu shabratis kiata. There's a wind that is blowing in this place. There's a wind that is blowing in this place. Please, I'd like you to bring all those people out now. If the ushers are few, some of you who are workers within the ministry, please join them. Join them very quickly. Rapata la kapat shabrati kebalakusiata. Please bring them out. Rate Paris Cabele Shabas, the wind is blowing. It's a new season. New season. There's a reason why I ask that you bring them out. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing fire. And the Lord is saying, I should tell someone, you are coming to the end of an old season. A season of training. God has been working upon you. My God, I don't know who that person is, but fire is falling upon that person. You are prayed, you are fasted. You are coming to the end of a prophetic season. You are at the corridor, stepping into a new season with a new mantle, with a new anointing. An old season, an old season, with everything that is old, with the limitations of the old, given way by the power of the Holy Ghost. Sabala Satapes, Krata Palakato, Sobrenda Betesh. Hallelujah. I'm hearing in my spirit deliverance from delay. Delay. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but fire is about to fall. Your family has been kept down in the same position. Nobody moves. Right now, I decree and declare at the count of three, may that fire fall. Help that lady. In the name of Jesus. The spirit behind delay I come by the road of the apostolic and the prophetic give way now 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 the spirit of delay tying down ministries tying down families tying down children tying down destinies Open your mouth and pray in one minute. I break the chains of delay. Delayed ministry. Never again. Delayed ministry. Delayed destiny. Taraba, are you praying? North East, are you praying? Never again. I stand to enforce the verdict of heaven. Outside, pray. Following by television. Turn your home to a prayer room. Turn your living room to a prayer room. Don't just watch. Pray. Participate. Oh. 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 Oh.
I'm hearing the name Godwin. Godwin. Your name is Godwin, sir. You know him? I want to speak to you, sir. Oh, because I was going to say that I'm looking at you, sir. I hope you are not offended, sir. Because I, I'm looking at him and I saw the same thing on your head, on him. The same cap, bishop cap. I still saw it on him and, and you are a bishop, sir. Huh? No, sir. In the name of Jesus, sir, with all you, please don't kneel, please don't kneel. Please don't kneel, you are a bishop, we honor you. In the name of Jesus. Are you alone, sir? You are with your wife. Yeah there's a grace on this meeting that you are carrying back are, are you an anglican bishop sir i'm seeing a replica of this kind of thing wherever i don't know where your your um your diocese or your station oh you are here i'm seeing a replica i don't know whether it's here or wherever it is you are but i'm seeing a replica of this kind of meeting in the name of jesus i agree with you sir by the privilege of the apostolic let grace let fire let it rest upon you let it be a new season for you and your wife and the ministry in the name of jesus and we use this man as a point of contact to pray for every bishop here that the grace god has deposited upon his servant his lordship let it be reproduced across the entire you know across the entire anglican communion in the name of jesus christ hallelujah who is Josiah God bless you sir Josiah I'm hearing a name Josiah I want to pray for the sick but I'm hearing the name Josiah please make sure you verify have you very you see Josiah ah! I'm seeing stones in a vision and I'm seeing fire come out of them and the Lord is saying destroy the hold of witchcraft this thing has tied a family destroy the hold of witchcraft I'm going to count three and you're going to shout the name Jesus any family here where witchcraft has sat on you manifesting as sickness manifesting as patterns as you shout that name here at Peniel 2024 in the name of Jesus every altar must give way are you ready now at the count of three one two three shout Jesus I command dark powers I command yokes I command altars give way now by the blood of the eternal covenant help that lady by the blood of the eternal covenant be broken be broken over destinies be broken over destinies across the 16 local government areas in Taraba state here be broken be broken yokes that have tied down women so they don't make progress be broken now yokes that have tied down young men so they don't go forward be broken now yokes that return married women back to their parents homes be broken now hallelujah listen listen i feel stead in my spirit to speak over the church in the northeast while we were having our conference as I flew over Canada, in fact, before I got there, for those of you who follow the conference, I saw a dark cloud literally over the territory. And the Lord said, this thing is targeted at priesthood so that those who bear the name of the Lord cannot be effective within the territory. Let me tell you honestly, there are spirits within territories. And in order of priority, the first thing they fight they find the voices that represent the program of God are we together now we are going to pray in one minute before I begin to pray for the sick that every church you will join me in the prayer 
every church that names the name of Christ in Taraba using the Anglican communion as a point of contact that in the name of Jesus every attack on the influence of the church every attack on the body of Christ in Taraba and the Northeast we stand as a united family of faith and we declare that it falls like Dagon before the ark open your mouth and pray in one minute advancement for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ massive salvation of souls like never before massive deliverances massive transformation by the accurate communication of doctrine believers empowered sends to be witnesses advancing the program of God within this territory someone pray in Jesus name we pray this little boy don't worry you don't have to lift him I'm looking at a little boy like this but what I'm seeing is a snake I'm not saying the boy is a, a witch or a wizard that's what I'm just telling you that I'm seeing oppression I don't know how old this boy is but in the name of Jesus I declare release this boy now out of it now release this boy now look at this look at this this is a little boy he is not even aware of what is happening Satan for you you will watch this boy cause a lot of destruction and not know and now let me correct something if you're a prophet here listen and learn because of what i saw you can call this boy a witch he's not a witch being under a demonic influence does not make you a witch don't harass people and keep creating stigma that even after they are delivered if this boy is your cook now even after he's delivered if you call him a witch will you eat the food So there needs to be intelligence as we dispense the gifts of the spirit the yoke and the foundation responsible for this boy's problem has nothing to do with him he was just a victim but thank god for the house of god he says send thee help from his sanctuary there is help in the sanctuary of god so we use this boy as a point of contact to everyone who has been brought out here by the spirit of god for various reasons in the name of Jesus, everyone under any demonic influence, by the blood of the eternal covenant, I set you free now. 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 By the blood of the eternal covenant. Who is Rebecca? Rebecca. Rebecca. I can presume that that's the name of so many people. I'm hearing the name Rebecca. Gentlemen, I can't even remember why I asked you to come here. Josiah. Josiah. Who is Rebecca? My mother. Your mother. Yes, Are you his mother, madam? Or you are Rebecca? Huh? No, no, don't worry. If, if, if your relative is Rebecca, just receive by faith while you are standing. I mean, a real Rebecca who is here. Please. God bless you, sir. Thank you somebody will be related to rebecca in one way or the other but i mean those who if you are rebecca here so that we don't don't tell lies are you rebecca your real name given to you by your parents rebecca there's someone you came here with pain just here where i'm placing my hand around your what, what part of the body is this what do we call this place hip the hip area right now as i'm speaking the power of god is coming upon you i want you to check yourself we'll take a few testimonies now let me pray over you, rebecca my dear the anointing of the spirit is coming on you this lady in front of me i decree and declare for you and for your family in the name of jesus christ rebecca by the power of the holy spirit every cause is broken now every cause is broken now every curse is broken now in the name of Jesus who is Adamu 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 that's like a house name for Adam I think Adamu 
Is your name Adamu? Who knows him? Who knows him as Adamu? Is his name Adamu? Hmm. No, sometimes we have to do this thing because you know, people just think everyone is faking this thing. So sometimes you just do this for the sake of integrity. Hallelujah. My friend, I'm going to pray for you. Uh, gentlemen, Adamu, I want to pray for you. I stretch my hands over you and I decree and declare. Look at me. The Lord is healing someone. You have a condition with your heart. Your heart. You cannot lie down with one, one area. You don't even know what is happening to you. It's a medical condition that can eventually degenerate to heart failure. If God does not step in, you feel severe pain around your heart. I'm about to pray for the sick now. And the power of God will heal you. But at the more I pray for you and your family. In the name of Jesus, may God restore. That is a prophetic word for you. I declare a word of restoration. In the name of Jesus Christ. Josiah. Is that the name? In Jesus' name. What do you do, sir? You're a student. I want to pray for you in Jesus' name. Because I'm seeing a Josiah who God is going to lift to become a breadwinner. That God will use to wipe the tears of his family members. I pray for you. This man, where are you from? This city? Uh, this very one. Yes. From where? What? From the local government. From where? The local government. Zing. Yes. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus. May the Lord show you mercy. Amen. May God lift you to be a breadwinner in your family. Amen. Do not despise yourself, not the workings of God in your life. It would turn you as ordinary as you look to a sign and a wonder. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is a gentleman at the back. I see the power of God coming on a gentleman. This is a very strong prophetic grace. A gentleman. It may fall on many people, but a gentleman. A gentleman. Mighty anointing. Careful. Let him not run anyhow. Please hold him. Hold him. A gentleman. You don't have to bring him out. I'm just speaking over him. A strong prophetic grace. Let that anointing rest upon you. May God begin to do wonders through your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, I want to pray for the sick. Please look at me. I believe with all my heart that you can walk away tonight from every demonic infirmity that has plagued your body are we in agreement on that here's what will happen i'm going to pray for the sick very quickly and let me request for the presence of one or two pastors here as soon as i pray for you i'm going to ask yourself i'm going to ask you to check yourself the moment the power of god touches you and you see that a miracle has happened some of you while you came here under the anointing already a miracle had happened i want you to walk to my left or to my right we'll take a few testimonies before i begin to make declarations over your life now lay your hands where you are trusting god for a miracle everywhere outside if you came with a sick person now is the time to believe god for their healing remember divine verdicts have to be engaged through the partnership of obedience for you are glorious and worthy to be praised you are the lamb of god upon the throne and unto you we lift our voice in praise you are the lamb upon the throne jesus something special supernatural about your name Jesus something happens when I mention please place your hand believe God for a miracle you had the testimony that the representative of the governor brought here very humbly 
I think God allowed him to just bring that testimony to stir up the faith of somebody. I want to pray for you. You do not have to walk away with that sickness. I have been sick before. I know what it means to be sick. And I know what it means to be healed. Genuinely healed. Not pretentiously healed. Genuinely healed. When the power of God touches you, medicine will confirm it. Medicine does not conflict the supernatural power of God. If it is genuine, authentic healing, medicine will agree that you are healed. I want to pray for you. Place your hand. If it's your head, lay your hands there. Your eye, lay your hands there. If you are holding a picture of someone who is sick, you can agree. If it's a part of your body you cannot touch, just make contact with your chest. Thank you, Jesus. No other name like the name of Jesus. No other name like the name of the Lord. No other name like the name of Jesus. He's worthy of honor. He's worthy of power. He's worthy of power and praise. In the name of Jesus Christ. You may be outside, but let me tell you truly, distance is no barrier. I saw so many people outside across the windows. And some who are following on ACNN, following across the airwaves. Give God a chance to bring his healing power to your homes your offices this is what he can do this is what he wants to do now that you can also join the never again campaign that never again will i spend all my salary on just drugs and earnings speaking about the woman with the issue of blood the bible says she spent her all on doctors and it was in no way better i pray for you now in the name that is above all names everyone under the sound of my voice you don't have to bring those under the anointing out again if i ask you to then you else just manage them where they are so they don't injure themselves every infirmity represented here the spirits that are back of any infirmity plaguing god's people in the name of jesus i declare let god's people go now my god the anointing of the spirit is so strong in this place let god's people go now the spirits behind infirmities the spirits behind diseases we curse you by the blood of the eternal covenant hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and then if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching